morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That's why we are here every day on The Bright Side helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we want to hear from you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side at 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, formulations, ingredients, skin health issues, body health issues, something you may have heard about or read about, or if you just want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number. We want to help you change your life today with a good nutritional supplement program, especially if you're dealing with some kind of chronic long-term degenerative disease and one out of two Americans over the age of 40 is dealing with one. The health, our health situation is abysmal in this country, and a lot of it has to do with flat-out misunderstanding how our bodies work. That's our mission here on The Bright Side, to help us all understand how am- this amazing biological system called the human body works. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can order products right off the website, or you can also sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team right off the website as well. I can help you build your business. We can do three-way phone calls. Uh, I can fly out to do presentations for you. I'm actually going out to see uh, my friend Rose Holmberg and Ted Anderson in Minnesota this Thursday. If you're in the Minneapolis area, I'll be doing a talk in uh, Minneapolis this Thursday at 7 p.m. You can find out more about the longevity business or the longevity products by calling the phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And of course, if you're interested in purchasing any of our Truth Skin Health products, you can head over to truthtreatments.com, take a special look at our retinol 5% gel. You will flake, it will exfoliate you, and your skin will be beautiful especially if you follow it up with our Omega-6 Healing Cream or Truth Serum or Truth Balm. You can find out about all the products at truthtreatments.com. Also have a skin health blog at truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to the bright side once again, friends. We're talking uh, progesterone, pregnenolone, the feel-good hormones. I call them the feel-good hormones. They're the balancing hormones. They're the the general health hormones. uh, Progesterone and pregnenolone, later on we're going to talk about DHEA. Last we spoke, we said progesterone is important for mental health, for brain health. There's more progesterone in the brain, 20 times more progesterone in the brain than there is in the blood. Progesterone is an anti-seizure hormone, improves healing from brain injury. It's anti-anxiety. It's a natural, uh, natural Natural Prozac. In fact, if you're considering using an SSRI drug, be it Effexor or Prozac or whatever they want to put you on, you might want to try a little progesterone and see what happens. Progesterone improves the activity of serotonin in the brain. It improves our ability to, to handle the ups and downs of life. That's what serotonin is. It's a, it's a management hormone. It helps us manage our day-to-day activities in terms of our stresses. I don't want to say it's a stress hormone. It's kind of like a, a balancing hormone. It keeps the ups from being too high and the downs from being too low. It just keeps us stable right in the middle. It's a way that we a hormone that helps us handle our lives, ha- handle life in general. And progesterone does much the same thing. So it should come as no surprise that progesterone will improve the activity of serotonin. 
progesterone is also, uh, progesterone levels, low progesterone levels are associated with nicotine addiction and alcohol addiction. And using a little progesterone cream can also help smooth out that bumpy ride that people go through when they try to withdraw from nicotine or when they try to withdraw from alcohol. Likewise with pregnenolone, by the way, both of, the, both of these substances, these feel-good substances can help you wean yourself off of alcohol or for or off of uh, uh, nicotine in the same way that it can help support serotonin production it can also help support some of the unpleasant symptoms that are associated with withdrawal if you're trying to quit smoking according to a 2009 Yale University study published in the journal human Phar uh, human psychopharmacology researchers showed that progesterone can alter the urge to smoke and it can help improve some of the sub subjective effects of nicotine or it can help support some of the subjective effects of nicotine. You may be able to replace your nicotine buzz with progesterone. When treated with progesterone, participants in the study exhibited enhanced suppression of smoking urges, reported higher ratings of negative effects from IV nicotine, and reported lower ratings of liking the drug, liking nicotine. In other words, they didn't like nicotine as much, and they said that they didn't have some, some of the, uh, the negative effects associated with nicotine. All right, I'm sorry, if they said that they had worse negative effects from nicotine. In other words, the nicotine, they didn't want the nicotine from using progesterone. This may account for some of the uh, differences in the uh, males and females and the genders when it comes to nicotine addiction. Progesterone levels in a woman fluctuate more than they do in a man. A woman's progesterone levels tend to drop at the end of her menstrual cycle. Women will go low progesterone right before they have their period. According to a 2010 article in the journal Experiential and Clinical Pharmacology, this can result in women having an increased susceptibility to nicotine addiction, particular during, particularly during those last seven days of the menstrual cycle when progesterone progesterone levels drop. And by the way, the same phenomena occurs with cocaine. And some re uh, researchers, some scientists believe that progesterone can reduce the effects of nicotine and cocaine and cravings for nicotine and cocaine. And seeing how many drugs work with the same kind of addiction chemicals in the brain, there's good reason to believe that progesterone can help you wean off of all drugs, including painkillers and opiates. It's worth a try. At the very least, you're going to get a nice little hit of progesterone. It'll have a nice calming effect. That's the, that's the most important strategy for withdrawing from, uh, from drugs, from, from painkillers or from alcohol or nicotine or anything. It's to activate the parasympathetic nervous system, the relaxation nervous system, as much as possible. And when you think about it, it kind of makes sense because one of the reasons we get addicted to drugs is because we want to be relaxed. We want to lighten up. Life is a kind of burden on us, and it seems like taking a drug may be a way to kind of relax that burden. So when you think about it, taking a hot bath or getting a massage or deep breathing or anything you do to activate the parasympathetic nervous system, it makes perfect sense that that would help you withdraw from a drug. It may be that that's the real drug that we want. It may be the real drug that we're looking for is the relaxation drug, the one we make in our brains. Addiction is a form of self-soothing. It's a, a form of self-medicating to calm down. So, <clears throat> excuse me, anything we could do to calm the body down is going to improve our ability or make it easier for us to wean ourselves off of these kinds of substances, uh, these kinds of substances like painkillers and opiates. Painkiller addiction is a serious, serious problem in this country. It's like we're all in pain, existential pain, not necessarily physical pain, pain of existence. The brain will make niacin when it's under duress. Niacin is also a calming substance, and there's actually a very important relationship between vitamin B3, niacin, and sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone. Women who are high estrogen producers, either they either they're have a, a lot of body fat or they're on hormone replacement therapy, or if they're pregnant, they're going to be more prone towards niacin deficiency disease. High estrogen means lower niacin. According to a July 2007 article in the journal Bioscience, Biotechnology, and Biochemistry, twice as many women die from pellagra, which is niacin deficiency disease, than men. Researchers conclude in the article that the female sex hormones, particularly estrogen, inhibits the synthesis of niacin and that women, especially during pregnancy, will be more at risk to pellagra, niacin deficiency disease, than are men. 
All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side on the Genesis Communication Network. Got lines open for you. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll take a quick break and come back with more good health information on The Bright Side right after this. The Bright Side, I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we do have lines open for you at 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or longevity business or formulations or ingredients or... If you want to wean yourself off your meds or help a loved one get off their medication and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you want to feel better using nutritional supplementation, we can help you. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear recommended on the program, head over to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or brightsideben.com. You can purchase products right off the website. You can also call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. And make sure you check out our Truth Treatment products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking progesterone, pregnenolone, feel-good hormones. They're not aggressive or super stimulating hormones like estrogen and testosterone. They're pretty much benign. Progesterone not quite as benign as pregnenolone, which is just unbelievably mild. Progesterone and, and, and pregnenolone, both, and DHEA, as we'll talk about later, have a very important role to play in the brain, in the health of the brain, as does the B vitamin niacin, which is one of the all-time great brain nutrients. It can be Niacin can be important for helping alleviate the symptoms of schizophrenia, of autism, of anxiety disorder, Asperger's syndrome, depression, dementia. In fact, if you go to medical school, they'll tell you that the signs of niacin deficiency are the three Ds, diarrhea, dermatitis, and dementia. I wonder how many people are dealing with issues of dementia are dealing with subclinical or misidentified pellagra. By the way, it's the four Ds, pellagra, niacin deficiency disease is associated with the four Ds, diarrhea, which is a digestive issue, obviously, dermatitis, which is a skin issue, dementia, mental health, brain health issue, and death. Niacin deficiency will kill you. And this is one of the reasons niacin's unbelievable importance to the body is one of the reasons niacin is a vitamin that your body can make. Under ordinary conditions, we call vitamins essential in the sense that, in the sense that, uh, that you need to have them in the diet. You can't make them, but niacin is an exception to the rule. Niacin is so fundamentally important to the human body and to health, not to, aside from mental health issues, Niacin is so important that your brain will make its own niacin, but that doesn't happen as well under conditions of uh, estrogen dominance. If we're uh, eating estrogen-containing foods, that can lead to a niacin deficiency in the brain. If we're exposing ourselves to BPA and other plastics, which have estrogen-like properties, that can affect niacin. Hormone replacement therapy can affect niacin. Every woman on hormone replacement therapy or on the birth control pill should be cranking the B vitamins, should be on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which is loaded with the B vitamins. Longevity, by the way, has a new uh, high-dose niacin product. It's called the Ultimate Niacin. It's a timed release, 500 milligram dose. It'll give you the benefits of niacin for doing a lot of things. If you have PMS issues, if you're dealing with menopausal issues, hot flashes, anxiety, jitteriness, insomnia, depression. Not to mention the fact that niacin is one of the all-time great anti-cholesterol supplements. I wonder how much, how much of our hypercholesterolemia issues, high blood cholesterol issues, are just due to niacin deficiency. You've got to think about it. Most of us, if we're not supplementing, are going to be deficient in niacin especially if we're not healthy, especially if we're estrogen dominant. Niacin is also very important for helping control blood sugar. It's important for helping control blood fats too. And if you use your ultimate niacin, you'll be able to get a good, healthy 500 milligram dose without flushing because it's timed release. Great new product from Longevity, the ultimate niacin. Also important for the heart. In fact, it's being marketed as a cardiovascular supplement, but so much more. As with all nutrients, when you take a nutrient for one specific issue, you get multiple benefits. Unlike drugs, you take a drug for one specific issue, you end up with toxic side effects. With nutrients, you end up with beneficial effects. Niacin, like progesterone, can also make it easier to quit smoking if you're addicted to nicotine. Nicotine and niacin share a lot of structural similarities, and it could very well be, once again, that smoking may be one of the ways we self-medicate to get our niacin. Topical progesterone and topical niacin, for that matter, can be helpful for rosacea patients. Rosacea is a condition where the skin appears red and uh, you could kind of see the blood vessels underneath the skin. 
and people will think it's a skin issue. And you'll have people, skincare professionals, unfortunately, selling products for the skin when you have rosacea. Completely misunderstanding the fact that rosacea is not a skin condition. It's a circulatory condition, contrary to appearances and contrary to the belief of many. It is not a skin condition. It's a circulation condition. And both niacin and progesterone can be helpful for improving the tone of blood vessels. Rosacea patients are more likely to suffer from other blood vessel issues, not surprisingly, because rosacea is a sign of an internal imbalance. Hemorrhoids, varicose veins, migraine headaches are all associated with rosacea. All of this is to say that rosacea needs to be addressed, similar to acne, similar to eczema, similar to psoriasis, similar to all skin conditions. Rosacea needs to be addressed internally. Even though it looks like you're, it looks like it's a skin condition, it is not a topical condition. Same, by the way, with puffiness under the eyes, baggy eyes, or uh, dark circles under the eyes. I get so many calls and letters about dark circles under the eyes. Dark circles and bagginess under the eyes are circulation issues, like rosacea. There's signs that there's something going on with the circulatory system, and that makes perfect sense because all health conditions are circulation issues. All health conditions are circulation issues. If I had to tell you one fundamental thing to understand about the body and health and how to get better if we're not well, it's this. All health conditions are circulation issues. The circulatory system gets clogged, we get sick. I call it dirty blood, toxemia, toxins in the blood. Of course, how does the blood become toxic? From the food. Thus the primacy of the gut when it comes to staying healthy. That's the reason the gut is so important because this is the connection to the internal blood, to the internal milieu. That is, my friends, the fundamental message of The Bright Side, breaking it all down, cutting to the chase. You never have to listen to another health program ever again. If you just want to understand, if you could just make that link, just understand that link between dirty blood, between the digestive system, dirty blood, and health challenges. When we talk about the triangle of disease, we're really talking about dirty blood. The triangle of disease is the, the three points that precede all disease. That is the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and the adrenal thyroid complex. And the reason this triangle is one unit is because all three of these points affect the blood. Sugar is a sign of dirty blood. The blood becomes dirty through the digestive system. Or sh I shouldn't say sugar is a sign. Sugar can cause dirty blood. Dirty blood blood becomes dirty through the digestive tract and then the cortisol, the, the adrenal hormones, stress hormones, and the thyroid also affect the circulatory system. So rosacea, skin diseases, all health challenges focus on the circulation system. And by the way, this is why rosacea has been linked to other health challenges. That's called comorbidity. That's the fancy way of saying other health challenges. Comorbidity refers to other things that go wrong when you have one specific health issue. And rosacea has got lots of comorbidities. All skin conditions have comorbidities. Psoriasis has a lot of comorbidities. In the case of rosacea, type 1 diabetes is linked to rosacea. Rheumatoid arthritis is linked to rosacea, according to a April 23rd, 2016 article in the journal Dermatology News, rosacea in women is linked to a wide variety of autoimmune disorders, including celiac disease, multiple sclerosis, in addition to the aforementioned type 1 diabetes and rheumatoid arthritis. According to another article, this one in the October 2015 edition of, of uh, which one, uh, Journal of the American Academy of Dermatology, rosacea is correlated with hyperlipidemia, that means high blood fats, hypertension, metabolic disorder. Bright side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. 844-236-6010 is our number. We've got lines open for you. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. Thank you to Peter in the UK for setting that up. Benfuchsarchives.com, super website. It's a, a compilation of all my various websites, and Peter does such a fine job on that. There's a there is a search engine there too as well. There's also a search engine on brightsideben.com and you can purchase products off of brightsideben.com as well as pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. Of course, if you want any truth treatment products, you can head over to truthtreatments.com. If you're in the Minnesota area, Burnsville, or I'm sorry, Roseville, Minnesota, Roseville, Minnesota, I'll be at the Roseville Skating Center, 2661 Civic Center Drive in Roseville, 55113. If you want to map quest it, that's this Thursday, May 5th. 
from 7 to 9 p.m. There'll be uh, giveaways, and we'll be talking for a couple of hours about health and nutrition, what I call the bright side philosophy. If you're in the Minnesota area, love to see you in the Roseville, Minnesota area. That's for my friend Rose Holmberg, and that's this Thursday, May the 5th. Okay, we'll get your calls here in a sec. If you're on hold, hang on. 844-236-6010 is our number. We do have lines open for you. We were talking earlier about quitting smoking. Well, it turns out that vitamin E, which is another one of those calming vitamins, works with pregnenolone and progesterone. They make a perfect pair, progesterone. In fact, progesterone and vitamin E work together transdermally. If you're doing transdermal progesterone cream, you might want to consider breaking open or sticking a pin in a vitamin E capsule and squeezing some vitamin E in your dose of progesterone cream. It will help improve the penetration of the progesterone. And a, and a good formulation, a good progesterone cream formulation, will already include a little vitamin E. I always, I always used to put in about 100 or so, which is a big dose, 100 IU of vitamin E per dose of progesterone in my progesterone cream when I was formulating it, when I was compounding it. This is from uh, this is from Ohio State University taking a specific form of vitamin E, gamma tocopherol in this case. Taking gamma tocopherol can accelerate the health benefits that occur when people quit smoking. In a small study, improvement in blood vessel function is associated with added vitamin E, 19% greater drop in future risk for cardiovascular disease after you quit smoking. Vitamin E is awesome stuff, man, for calming the body down. All right, let's see here what else I want to tell you. I got lots of articles. Yeah, we'll take your calls. We'll uh, we'll get your calls here now. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Do have lines open for you, Justin in Oklahoma? What's going on, man? Welcome to the bright side. Just wondering on on that. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's going on, Justin? Okay. Uh, I was wondering on that pregnenolone. Uh, does that does that affect birth control? My wife was wondering about taking it, but she's on a birth mm, control. No, it sh- no, no, it shouldn't. It'll it'll help protect her from some of the untoward effects of estrogen. Do you know what she's on? What birth control pill she's on? No. Chances are, it's a combination of estrogen and progestin, fake progesterone. Very, very nasty substances. Now, birth control, birth control is kind of tricky because, excuse me, birth control is so effective for birth control, but it's just really, really nasty stuff from a biochemical standpoint. It's, it re- really represents an ignorance of pharmacology to play around with hormones in this toxic sense, but it's really tough because they're so effective. They work so well. I mean, no must, no fuss. You take your pill and you don't have to worry about anything. So it's hard to argue you for folks not to use the birth control pill, but just know that you're playing with fire if you're on it. Here's the deal, Justin. Pregnenolone will protect your wife from some of the negative effects of the uh, toxic estrogen and toxic progesterone for that matter. So if you're on the birth control pill, you definitely want to, or I don't say definitely, but it's a good idea to use pregnenolone. And then also, if you're on the birth control pill, it's not just a good idea, it's a must to get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine because of the B vitamins. Estrogens, okay. estrogens and the progest- uh, uh, hormone replacement therapy and birth control pills, they will deplete the body of vitamin B6 and vitamin B3. It's extremely important that you get on the, and for that matter, riboflavin, vitamin B2. The B vitamins are unspeakably important, and uh, it could very well be that some of the nasty effects associated with long-term use of the estrogens of, the, uh, of birth control pills and, and synthetic hormones may be the result of B vitamin deficiency. So if you're on the B birth control pill, or you're on hormone replacement therapy, if you're exposed to estrogens in any way, which is all of us, by the way, you want your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which is basically, well, which is in many ways a B vitamin replacement supplement. It's got lots of other things in there too, but the B vitamins are the superstars of that formulation in my humble opinion. Does that help, Justin? Okay, yeah. Uh, Anything else? Nope. Tangy, lose, say uh, it again. I think we lost okay, you there, we're, buddy. We're already, oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, we're already on the Beyond Tangy and uh, Tangerine. We, we take it already and everything, and I got my mom on it now. Wait, and, how's uh, she doing? Are they noticing uh, energy? Yeah, she loves it. Uh, she's getting out more and, and doing quite a bit. That's awesome. And, uh, and everything. But that, that was one of the things, too. I didn't know I was going to try and get her to start taking that uh Pregnenolone? Yeah. Had you heard about it before, or did you hear about it just from us? Uh, just from you guys. Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. I, 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 it's, it's interesting to me how nobody ever talks about this stuff. It's so cheap, and it's so effective, and it's so non-toxic. Uh, All right, man. And also, also wife, one more. Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, as far as for my wife uh, on that pregnenolone, what dosage should you take? 100 milligrams a day to start. 
Okay. You could take up to 300 milligrams a day. One more thing I should tell you is the vitamin E. Have her, have her take some vitamin E also, 400 international units of vitamin E. Vitamin E is one of those that you have to go to the health food store to get. It's not found in foods, vitamin E. Uh, if you're smoking, if you're using hormone replacement therapy, if you're under duress of any kind, if you're exposed to the sun, you want vitamin E, uh, ideally mixed tocopherols and mixed, mixed tocotrienols. Have her take 400 international units a day. Okay, thank you. Okay, good deal. Good to talk to you, Justin. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Steve, what's going on, man? Steve in PA. Steve? Okay. I was uh, wondering about the DHEA. Yes. Boy, I thought on fast. I didn't even get a chance to review my notes here that I was uh, wrote up on uh, Friday. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, my research discovered DHEA was allegedly the master hormone. Yes. Uh, I don't know if it was for... Uh, uh, was it for longevity or Yes. Or if it's good, hormones? everything good. DHA is a master hormone for everything good. It's similar to pregnenolone and progesterone, but it's more like related to the sex hormones. Progesterone and pregnenolone are related to the sex hormones too, but progesterone and pregnenolone also get shifted into stress hormone. But DHEA goes right into sex hormones. It turns into your growth and fertility hormones. That means anything that has to do with growth and fertility and wellness is going to be upregulated by DHEA. HEA. You follow me? Does that make sense? I heard you, you live uh, like 20 years longer. You, you know, I don't know specifics about 20 years longer, but I know that longevity is associated with DHEA. I also know that as we get older, our DHEA levels drop, and this is one of the reasons why testosterone and estrogen tend to drop as we get older, because we're not making as much DHEA. DHEA, DHEA by the way, and we're going to talk at length about it later on, DHEA is made from progesterone. So when you take your progesterone, or if you use your progesterone, you will make more DHEA. Did you say pregnenolone and uh, progesterone? Uh, Steve, we've got an awful connection, bro. I don't know if I'm on speaker or what, but the awful connection. No, con I don't know. Uh, listen, I can't even do this. Can You, you want to call back? If you call yeah. back, I'll, I'll get you Thank right you. up. I'm sorry, buddy. Okay. Uh, Rory in Watsonville, California. What's going on, man? Hey, Dan. Thank you for taking my call. Hey, I've, sure. got, a, I've got a good friend that's... Uh, struggled with quitting pot for years and successful and back on that, you know so on and so forth how Does much he is he smoking he, is he smoking like 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 wake and bake deal uh he, he's trying not to he's trying to just do the evening and just, okay but, you know he's got to get his fix he's okay i hear you hang on fun. hang on rory we gotta take a break don't go away we'll finish when, when we come back from our break okay all right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got lines open for you. We'll be back right after this. Don't go away. Okay, we are back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We're talking to Rory, the, uh, Rory in Watsonville. Rory, you there, man? Yeah, I'm here. Thanks, man. Okay, so here's the deal with pot smoking. It depends, as far as kicking it or weaning yourself off of it, it kind of depends on why he's using the pot. If he's using it to self-medicate because he doesn't want to deal with life, when he's quit smoking pot, his problems are going to come back, and it's tough to... It you know what I'm saying? It's tough to, to yeah, not I, do it. It's more, it's more from, you know, it, well, who knows why he started. I mean, he's like me. He started when he was about 15. I is he smoked intensively for a few years. I know the crave. With God's help, I was relieved of it immediately. But he struggled with it. And then it becomes a habit, and you can't see the force or the okay. trees, but he knows he's got to get rid of it. Okay, now if but it's I'm a habit. But I'm hearing alone plus the, you know. Well, hang on. Hang on, Roy. I'll tell you some nutrients here in a sec, but here's the deal. Because I don't want you to think, oh, you just take these nutrients and you're off, off your drugs. Here's the deal. If he is really, really serious about wanting to quit, but he's just physically or physiologically addicted and he doesn't want to go through the withdrawal, yes, these supplements can be extremely helpful. I'll tell you what these are in a sec. But if he's doing it to self-medicate or self-soothe, you know what I mean when I say that? To self-soothe? Yeah, I know. Okay. Sure, sure. Okay, if he's doing it to self-medicate and self-soothe, the problem is when he quits smoking, his problems are going to come back. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, so I, you need to yeah. replace, he needs to find some other way to self-medicate or self-soothe that's not toxic. And it yeah. turns out that, that there's nothing that duplicates marijuana because what marijuana is doing is it's supporting your own endocannabinoid neurochemistry. And there's no yeah. other substance that does that. So yeah. if, he, if he wants to do that, if he wants to self-medicate and self-soothe, he has to come up with another way to do it. And there's lots of things that he can do, not specifically for the endocannabinoids, the, the internal brain cannabinoids, brain T 
THC, if you will. But what he can yeah. do is he can do the re relaxation strategies. It's very important to find something else to soothe with, and that's where relaxation strategies come in. What if you, Rory, imagine that, I don't know if you're addicted to anything or if you, you said you were I before. Was. Yeah. Imagine if you could get a back rub every time you were going to take a hit of pot. A, a half hour back rub. What do you think you'd oh, rather yeah. have? Right? Well, yeah. What would you rather have? A half hour back rub or a hit of pot? Well, you know yeah, what I'm saying? No. Right? I, when I was yeah, when I was 15, I would have gone for the pot, but I didn't know anything. Well, what I'm saying is if you could find other ways to self-soothe or self-medicate, nobody's gonna, yeah. it's hard to find a, uh, somebody to rub your back every time you want to hit a pop. But I'm, I'm just being, saying theoretically, if we could find other ways to self-soothe, it would make it so much easier to wean ourselves off of pot. Yeah. Now, from a, from a right. physiologic standpoint, or any drug really, but from a physiologic standpoint, because that's what you're asking, pregnenolone, definitely, 100 to 200 milligrams a day. Even if you're smoking pot, pregnenolone can, can help mitigate some of the effects of the high. So it will make your pot less pleasurable. So yeah. pregnant alone, and it will also protect your brain from the pot. The more, right, the more. I, I remember you said that you're, when you smoke pot, the THC upregulates yes. the pregnant alone in exactly. your brain. Exactly. Some it, sector in your brain. You said three thousand times, right? Yeah, huge amount. Huge amount. Yes, pregnenolone is neuroprotective. It's one of the ways the body naturally protects the brain. Same way, same with progesterone. Vitamin E can be helpful. The B complex can be helpful, particularly niacin. And if he wants to use a little progesterone cream, that wouldn't hurt either. Um, tryptophan, 5-HTP, or I like straight tryptophan. Some people get benefits from 5-HTP. Both of these help your brain make serotonin. Serotonin, of course, is important for keeping everything stable. Magnesium is important for helping relax the body and relax the brain. It's also very important for brain health in general. And then uh, GABA, G-A-B-A, -A, and lithium may also help them as well. And don't forget the omega-3 fats from the ultimate EFAs. Yeah, and I'm trying to get him to take the Healthy Start Pack. Yeah, that would be a good place to start. That would be a great place to start. And if he wants to do one thing, he doesn't want to spend money, he just wants to do one quick thing, keep your sugar down. Reduce uh, hypoglycemia, low blood sugar will uh, cause great distress in the body, makes the body really jittery, cortisol gets secreted, and you'll be more prone to smoking pot. So keeping the blood sugar stable is extremely important. Yeah. Many of these nutrients yeah. that we talk about are really blood, they work via the blood sugar. Niacin oh, yeah. works be, by at least partially by stabilizing blood sugar. All right, yeah. got to move on, Rory. Thank Did you, I help? Sir. Take care. Okay. Yes, it does. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay, take care. All right, 844 236 6010 is our number. We got Steve back. Go ahead, Steve. Let's see if we got a better connection, bro. Yeah, testing, one, two. Yes, we got okay, you. Okay, uh, uh, the DHEA, uh, y y did you say that that, uh, uh, compared to pregnenolone and uh, progesterone, that it uh, the pregnenolone and progesterone could revert to cortisol? But progesterone and pregnenolone? Progesterone and pregnenolone are, 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 are raw materials for cortisol. The next step is cortisol and cortisol-like substances after progesterone. You get how, does it make sense how all these chemicals are proceeding sequentially into other chemicals? How, how uh, co cholesterol proceeds to proge uh, pregnenolone, it proceeds to progesterone, then progesterone proceeds to cortisol. These are all made from each other. And this is, these are called, this is called a biochemical pathway. I think you know what I'm talking about, Steve. These, this is called the pathways. The pathways are how chemical A, or tinker toy A, for the non-chemists out there, tinker toy A gets converted into tinker toy B, or chemical structure A gets converted into chemical structure B, then C, then D, then E. And that's called a chemical pathway. And everything we're talking about here is the steroid hormone pathway, how all the steroid hormones proceed. So it starts, all starts off with cholesterol, which as I've said a zillion times, and I'll continue saying, is the single most important molecule in the body, and nothing says the stupidity of the medical, the pharmacomedical model, than drugs that suppress cholesterol. Cholesterol proceeds, or gets tweaked and becomes pregnenolone, which in turn gets tweaked and becomes progesterone. Now from progesterone, you go two directions. Progesterone can get tweaked one way and can become the stress hormones, or it can be tweaked another way and become DHEA. And then DHEA, the then DHEA, what, what, let me just, what, what, let me just say this one last thing. DHEA then gets tweaked to become the sex hormones. Go ahead, I'm sorry. What, uh, what uh, causes uh, well, it to, to, to go to a cortisol or stress hormone, right? Uh, yeah. That's associated with the, what, adrenals, correct? Correct. Or, uh, or uh, DHEA. It is, uh, it's an awesome it is question, Steve. Steve, you, that is an awesome question. You cut right to the chase. What is it that dis what determines whether your progesterone is going to ma be made, be turned into, or be tweaked, if you will, to become a stress hormone or a sex hormone or DHEA? 
it has a choice. There's a little fork in the road, and progesterone can either take fork to, uh, the fork to the left and become stress hormone, or the fork to the right and become youth hormone. And your question, Steve, cuts right to the chase, because if we can figure out what is it that determines which direction that progesterone goes, we will be able to maintain our youth and vitality and fertility and everything we like about life longer. What is it that determines it? Stress is what determines it. Burden, sympathetic overload. This is the juncture between the parasympathetic effects, the relaxation effects of the body, and the uh, uh, sympathetic stress effects in the body. Right where you, you hit the nail on the head, Steve. That's the point. That's what we want to understand is why does progesterone go into making stress hormones versus, uh, versus uh, fertility and youth and, and health hormones, uh, and happy hormones. And the key... The key is burden. The key is stress. When the body's in survival mode, it will make more stress hormone. That's the okay, bottom line right there. You have two types of stress. You have natural stress. I'm talking about distress. I'm not talking about you stress. Yes, you're right. There are two kinds of stress. There's you stress, EU stress. That's good stress. And that's just quick bursts of intense stress. By the way, I just read a really cool article that I wanted to talk about here. Not that I want to digress, but you, uh, well, according, you guys may have heard this. They call it the one-minute workout. Did you hear about this? The one-minute workout? Now I can't find it. That's what I want to tell you about yeah, that's for when you, when, you, when you do like uh, sprints. And yes, really yes, go off for 50 yes. At a time. This, this was all over the news on Friday, and I, I printed up this article. Now I can't find it, but uh, it was all over the news on Friday how intense the, uh, 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 scientists at McMaster's University in Canada uh, found that intense one-minute workouts give you just as much benefit as a 45-minute long-term long-term workout. And this is the idea of you stress, intense stress, versus long-term drip, 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 chronic stress, or distress. So yes, you're right. You but stress... You stress will shunt you into DHEA and the sex hormones. Distress will shunt the progesterone into cortisol, and that's where you run into problems. Go I'm ahead. I'm sorry. I'm not talking about that type of stress. What I'm talking about is the natural stress from, like, free radicals and, and Same. biochemicals in your body. You see, when you get older, you get, you're going to pick up all these uh, toxins in your body. That's yes. one type of stress. Then you have the stress from somebody that's a problem neighbor or whatever. No, they're not. They're, they're not two different stresses. They're the same. And, uh, oxidants and toxins in the blood equal a, a messed up neighbor biochemically. And that's an important point. You know, we don't want to distinguish, we don't want to make a distinction between psychological and mental and emotional stresses and physiologic stresses because from the biochemical standpoint, they're the same. That's the power of our mind. This is how the mind controls the body. And that's a very, very important point. You know, I'm guilty, I'm guilty of, of focusing a lot of, on nutrition sometimes at the expense of understanding the mental and emotional components. I try to mention it periodically, but it's so important to, to understand that health is holistic, spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. It's not just physical. So I'm not sure if I hear the music there or not. Is that the music, Keith? That's the music. Oh, that's the music. All right, I hear the music now. All right, Keith, I, we got to go, Steve. I apologize, man. Have a good day. Good to talk to you. All right, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks for listening, friends. 844, uh, sorry, if you want to uh, check out our longevity products, head to criticalhealthnews.com, brightsideben.com, or pharmacistben.com, or call 866-735-2470. Have yourselves an awesome, beautiful, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later, folks. Bye for now.